So we've be, uh, been very interested in biologically inspired computing. So a lot of AI is based upon you know, graph search, other techniques which are disconnected from how brains actually do computation. So our, our idea was to, well, the idea of uh, others as well, is to look more closely at the brain, see what principles we can uh, extract, and then figure out if we can build a, a chip around those principles. Some of the principles of the brain are very attractive. So the brain is massively uh, parallel. It's distributed. Um, it, it, it ends up using very little power to do the kind of computation that it does. And those types of computation, like being able to perceive uh, the environment, being able to understand uh, spoken dialogue, those sorts of things are, are the kind of workloads that we would like um, computers in the future to be able to, to, uh, to handle. Right now, if you look at a computer you look at an, uh, that you have in a cell phone, you have on your desktop, those computers you might consider as high speed adding machines. So they're really good at doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and doing it really fast with very high precision. The brain doesn't do that. It can use very low precision, doesn't have to do these exact computations, doesn't have to move uh, memory uh, data around a lot, and as a result, it can do the kinds of things that we want to do in the future, perceive the world, et cetera, and it can do it at very low energy. So that makes it very attractive. So what we're trying to do at Qualcomm is to take those principles and build very low power pro uh, hardware that's also intelligent. You, you hear a lot of talk about the possible negative effects of, uh, of AI. And so then the, the next uh, leap you might make is, well, should there be some laws, some rules or regulation? But the only place that I've really seen uh, maybe negative consequences of AI are in movies. I don't think that the people working in an industrial corporation are, th are thinking actively about how can we you know, lead, uh, build something that will lead to the downfall of civilization. In, in that case, you'd get rid of all your customers. So it wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't be a very good idea. So, you, uh, so uh, you know, there's always a possibility that there's going to be individuals with uh, nefarious content who just, you know, they, they you know, want to, to cause damage. So the role of a company, uh, the, co the larger companies like Qualcomm, et cetera, is to build uh, defenses against those systems. And probably the best defenses are going to be uh, based upon AI that will be able to identify threats that, that, uh, the system that you haven't seen before and then uh, preempt them. So I think that uh, I think that it'll be enough for uh, companies to to concentrate on building defenses against this sort of uh, uh, these sorts of uh, threats. Um, I, I don't. Uh, hopefully, there won't be any need for any sort of regulations. So I think I think when you say that people are hesitant and scared, I think that's probably. Uh, something that's uh, idiomatic to uh, to the United States and to uh, you know Western civilization, where where people have grown up you know reading Frankenstein and you know so you have the scientist creates the, the terrible monster, the monster destroys the world, and, and the scientist. Um, if you uh, look at other cultures without that tradition, they're perfectly happy to accept robots. And I think you know uh, they, they want you you want something that can uh, you know fill in the gaps for you, can, that can take some of the burden off you, that can make you more productive. And so I think as people learn that when you say robot, you don't mean this killer beast that's going to that's going to destroy your life. You mean something that is going to uh, be able to enhance your productivity, allow you to get things done quicker, more efficiently, so you have more free time to, to do the things that you think are important. I can't imagine that anyone really wants to, say, um, pick up, uh, you know, uh, organize a house, declutter it, uh, you know, make it neat, you know, every week, week after week for their entire life, 52 weeks a year, you know, times their 70 or 80 years of life. No one likes it. No one, no one thinks, well, maybe there are a few people who like it. I'll take that back. But most people, I would bet, uh, would, would gladly allow an autonomous agent to, to do that work for them. And so there's, there's a need. There's a niche. There, there is a way that, that robots and humans are going to coexist so that uh, we can be in a symbiotic relationship and be mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm.